Hi, I'm GamerPetty, and today I'll show you two tricks you can do with your FY6800. This also works on the FY6900 and 6700, I guess. Well, let's turn it on. And the first trick is, well, these these are sold in different megahertz models, like 30, 20, 60. And I think the, the 100 megahertz model is the highest on the 6900 and on the 6800 it's a 60 megahertz. But they're all internally the same, so they all have 250 mega samples per second and all 14 bit. Just the firmware is configured differently. So the other one is a 30 megahertz model, so I can only go up to 30 megahertz. But there is a trick where you can increase this. Um, it involves these arbitrary waveforms when you select a channel and hit wave to change the waveform and you click OK a few times and you land at arbitrary 1 and you can save up to 64 arbitrary waveforms. So let's do this. I already saved some on this device like this one it's a 10 cycle sine wave and that's a two cycle sine wave. What it does is when I select the 10 cycle sine wave and I enter 30 megahertz, it's outputting in theory 300 megahertz. But since we only have 200 mega samples per second, according to Nyquist, we can only have half that at the output frequency. So the maximum will be 125 megahertz that will be 12.5. So let's change that to the arbitrary signal G2, which is two cycles. This means the set frequency is doubled, basically. So let's check the scope. I have set the signal generator to eight, so it's doubled. Let's set it to 30. And there we go. Clean 60 megahertz. We also can uh, do a three cycle or four cycle to three or four times the uh, output frequency we set. Uh, well, let, let's do that. To do that, we just connect the Filtec via USB. And hopefully have the drivers installed, which it seems it does. So let's start the DDS signal software. We can, you can find it on Google, just search for FY6800 software first result. The 6900 software should work as well, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, so it's connected. It shows it's the 30 megahertz model. It's all fine. Now let's go to the waveform window and we can add new waveforms. Click on add waveform. Let's select the first waveform should be a sine wave with four cycles and that's it load waveform there we go loading area let's say we go into three that's arbitrary three yes yeah, send data there we go that's that easy you can also make more complicated waveforms this way like modulate a triangle waveform onto it with also four cycles it may look like this or give it a DC offset slightly and yeah you can modulate up to 16 or even 18 with uh, custom waveforms uh, onto one but you're still limited to the 88,192 samples you can also enter your own waveforms via text window in uh, minus one to one values you just have to enter 8192 values. You can, for example, write a program that does this for you. But I uploaded the new waveform at slot 3, so let's go back to the signal generator. Here at the signal generator, we click Wave and select 3. As you can see, it's a 4 cycle sine wave this way. So let's go to Frequency, and we can, when we set 10 MHz, it's outputting 40 MHz. So oh, there we go. You see on the top right, 
40 megahertz. Let's increase this to 20, so four times it's 80. Yeah, it's working fine. Let's go to 25 for 100 megahertz, and we can see the signal is dropping quite hard, so the device bandwidth is about, uh, let's say, measure. RMS, well, yeah, device bandwidth is about 80 megahertz, maybe 70, but let's see how high we can go. 25, mm, doesn't look too good. We're at 100 megahertz, and if we go to 30 at 120 megahertz, yeah, it, it starts looking really bad but that's the easy way to upgrade your field tech you can buy a 20 megahertz model and just give it that arbitrary waveform and there we go you got a 100 megahertz or 80 megahertz model let's go on to trick number two so trick number two is well it's a workaround for this model in my previous review I said that it doesn't have a trigger output. So when we go into the sweep mode by pressing the sweep button, we can set a sweep from let's say 100 megahertz to 10 kilohertz with one second time. So it takes one second for the whole sweep. So let's turn it on. And we obviously have to enable channel one for this to work. Again, let's zoom out. There you can see it's sweeping. And, well, we don't have a trigger signal, so let's enable channel 2 and set channel 2 to a square wave, now to a CMOS wave, with a frequency of 1 Hz. So we should have a trigger signal if they're both in sync. Let's see. Yeah, no. Let's trigger off channel 2. Normal. And change the sweep from, let's say, 10 Hz to 100 Hz to better see it on the scope. Again, at one second, there we go. And as you can see, we're triggering off this edge, but the sweep is doing what it's what it wants. It's it's moving all around. It's not really reliable uh, for a trigger signal. But there's a better way, which doesn't involve the sweep function. We go back to channel two, set it to waveform ramp for a linear sweep or set it to exponential rise for a logarithmic sweep. So let's go back to ramp. Then we go into modulate. So the modulation mode to FM and select source channel 2. Now we select, we enter our modulation range, let's say 1 kilohertz. But first we have to set channel 1 to half that, so 500 megahertz. Now the center point is 500 megahertz and it modulates back and forth 500 megahertz in each direction. So let's enable modulation and zoom out a little bit, triggering off a falling edge. There we go. And as you can see, we have a very clean trigger signal for our sweep. It's sweeping properly. And the only thing that's a little bit annoying, as you can see, the face is moving a little bit, but that's not a big issue. But yeah, that's the sweep trick, how you get a trigger signal out of your field tech FY 6800, 700, 900, doesn't matter. And before I forget it, I have enabled three channels. Channel 1 is channel 1 of the field tech, it's the modulated signal. 
channel 2 is channel 2, which the modulated, modulated signal is modul based on, so it's the ramp. And channel 3 is the sync output of this device. The sync output is to hook these both together, so they work in phase and don't drift apart. The sync output always output, outputs half the frequency you set on channel 1, no matter if channel 1 is enabled or not. So you can see on these blue lines they well they get closer together. So yeah, I'm Gavin Pity and thanks for watching.